Legacy of the Draken is a fantasy total conversion mod for Mountain Blade Warband. It adds new factions, new features, new races, new units, and even an entirely new map. But most importantly for us, it adds necromancy, demon summoning, and magic to the game. It's important to mention that this mod is currently in early access, and the version this video is about is version 0.39. So if you're watching in the future, many things may now be different. Although the mod is in early access, it plays very nicely and it reminds me a bit of Fantasy Carradia, although this mod has the potential to be better than that. Fantasy Carradia had some problems, like the broken tournament mechanic. Well, tournaments work fine in this mod. The only broken thing I've seen so far is placeholder dialogue for the vast majority of companions. There are a few that are complete, but most of them have this placeholder conversation dialogue. But that doesn't really matter. I always found those damn companions a pain in the ass, to be honest. Always whining, always bitching. Eh, I don't like so and so. Eh, he said something that pissed me off. What do you think I am, you dopey prick? A kindergarten teacher or something? Get your ass back into gear, fall back into line, and get ready to fight. Too bad this mod doesn't implement a feature to slay a companion and reanimate it into a less annoying form. That's what's really needed here. Let's talk about the necromancy and the demon summoning. Necromancy is a skill which you can invest points into, so ramp these points up as much as you can. There's also a magic skill, which I also invested points into and maxed out. I'm not sure if this skill has any effect on the demon summoning or not, but it most certainly affects battle magic. In order to unlock necromancy in the game, you need to travel to an independent city called Skull's Isle. Here you can purchase a book, and once you have it, you can perform rituals at your campsite. The rituals you perform can summon units to fight for you, like skeletons and zombies, or items like the skeleton horse. There's also a ritual for lichdom, but it will cost you a lot of money. At first you won't have many rituals, but as your necromancy skill increases, more will unlock. Mostly they unlock in levels, like Summon Skeletons 1 and Summon Skeletons 2. Sadly this does not affect the quality of the minion, only its quantity. For example, Summon Zombies 1 might only summon 10 zombies in an afternoon, while Summon Zombies 5 will get you 50 over an entire day or so. With the exception of the Lichdom Ritual, the only thing these rituals will cost you is time and honour. Every ritual reduces your honor by a lot, but the more dishonorable you are, the better your rituals become. The necromancy is very useful early on for getting cheap and useful troops, but it becomes less useful as time goes on. A ritual cannot be interrupted, so you might summon 50 zombies, but then you're stuck there waiting for an entire day. You'll be unable to move out of the way of an aggressive dragon horde that's coming your way, and you'll also be unable to defend a castle that's besieged, or you're stuck recovering from the ritual. However, capturing a castle and filling it to the brim with hundreds of zombies and skeletons is quite easy, and makes holding a recently captured castle much easier. Zombies begin unarmed and naked, but can be upgraded into zombie footmen which have basic armor and equipment. Skeletons only come in one form, naked but with a weapon and shield. Both zombies and skeletons are quite competent, but I'm unsure how to scale them against normal soldiers. They're no match against a knight, or a hired blade, or any kind of elite unit like that, but they're also surprisingly effective, and can take down stuff you'd not expect them to. They're also a lot better than basic troops, so I think they fall somewhere in the middle. They never fall unconscious in the battle, so the surgeon's skill won't help your undead. As for lichdom, whenever I attempt the ritual it tells me I need more money. For testing purposes, I cheated and got 200,000 gold in the game, and even with this much money the ritual was still not possible. So I think this means that lichdom is not implemented yet. Now we come to the demon summoning. Just like necromancy, a special item is required to summon demons, and the more rituals you perform, the further your honor will decrease, and the better your rituals will become. I came across a demonologist and his band of minions in the wilds, and murdered him. From the loot menu I was able to take his robes, which gave me access to demonology rituals. But I think you can also walk to the warlock's lair, and purchase robes there if needed. 
Just like in necromancy, there's rituals for summoning minions, but also for summoning items. One of the items you can summon is the Hellblade. It's an extremely damaging burning sword. Think of it a bit like a lightsaber. It will kill most lesser units in one hit, and makes killing elite units considerably easier. It also comes in different forms, like one-handed and two-handed. As for the minions, you can summon imps, which as far as I've been able to tell aren't terribly useful. Much later on though you can summon the demon, which is an insanely strong unit. He runs into battle throwing fireballs, and anything that survives the fireballs gets taken down with a hellblade. The demon is most certainly as strong as an elite unit like a hired blade, if not stronger. The ritual for these guys takes a long time though, so they're difficult to accumulate in large numbers. Although since every one of them is almost a one-man army, it doesn't matter so much. Unlike undead, demons can fall unconscious in battle, so they benefit from your surgeon skill. Along with necromancy and demon summoning, there's also some kind of battle magic available, with spells like fireballs. I haven't investigated this side of it yet, aside from the beginner fireballs which are very good, and behave like throwing weapons. You can also find and recruit mages into your army, and as these mages progress and level up you can push them into a fire mage direction, or an arcane mage direction. The mod also adds a cool feature called the lair. A lair can be built anywhere and functions like a base. You can store prisoners and troops here, and these lairs are very convenient. You can also have more than one lair. In addition to the necromancy side of things, there's also an entire undead faction ruled by a vampire queen. If you go to the village of this undead faction, you can recruit undead units from there, and they can be upgraded into various undead knights and undead archers. There's also vampire ladies in the game now, if you're into that. This has just been a brief look at the mod. I haven't investigated everything. It could be that there's even more rituals available that I wasn't able to find and unlock, and the mod will most certainly add new features and units in the future. I'm going to score this a 7.6 out of 10. It's very good, and it's a lot of fun. If it wants to get a 10 out of 10 from me though, some important areas need work. Firstly, we need more minion types and variety. I'd like advanced and elite kinds of skeletons and zombies, skeleton knights, skeleton archers, zombie abominations, stuff like that. Something else that would be really cool would be like spirit warriors, things like that. Ghosts, wraiths, all these kind of things. We see very often in games and mods, skeletons and zombies, but we don't see that much of spirits. So I've always got kind of a hunger for some spirits. Secondly, it would be really awesome if after victory in battle, some of the dead units automatically get raised and added to the army. Fantasy Car Radio did this, and it was always a very nice touch. This would also help keep your momentum up. In Fantasy Car Radio, you could kind of keep your victories rolling and continually get uh, reinforcements to your army. Whereas in this mod, currently you've got to sit there and wait for a while, doing a ritual to replenish lost undead. Finally, it would be cool if some of the rituals required ingredients. At the moment, time and honor are the only fuel for a ritual. I can't wait to see how this mod looks once it's fully released. It's very polished, it hasn't crashed on me or anything like that. It's a lot of fun, it really just needs a few more units and then it'll be great. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching. I've got more videos on necromancy games and mods coming your way.